Rockets owner Tillman Fertitta, friend of the show, says Houston will not trade James Harden or Russell Westbrook. General manager Daryl Murray, he's out, as is coach Mike D'Antoni. But during his weekly appearance on CNBC's Power Lunch, Fertitta said that Houston's outlook hasn't changed. They are still contending. Stephen A., do you agree with Fertitta's plan to keep his superstars intact? No, I do not. Um, and I'm not saying that definitively, like meaning you have to trade him. Yeah. I'm saying you can't close the door on that possibility. Um, you know, when you look at a guy like Russell Westbrook, he's been around for a long time. You look at James Harden, they've been around a while. Of course, you keep one of them. But the other may have may bring you incredible assets in return for their services. And I, I of course, I'm going to be a supporter of keeping James Harden at all costs. The brother just finished averaging 34. He averaged 36 the year before. He's a league MVP. He's been a top two candidate for MVP honors at least three separate occasions. This brother is something special offensively. He is a magician with that basketball. Now, the flip side to it is that you got to get the right coach up in there. You got to get a coach up in there that's going to preach movement. It's going to make sure they make adjustments at halftime. It's going to prioritize defense a little bit more than Mike D'Antoni did, even though Elston Turner, I thought, did a really good job. And in the postseason, Houston had the top offense, uh, sorry, the top defense in the bubble. At one point before they went up against the Lakers, I mean, considering those eight regular season games and then the first round of the playoffs, they had the best defense in the bubble. So we can't ignore that. But in the end, when you consider the fact that what you have tried isn't working. Steph Curry and Klay Thompson's coming back and go to state. Lakers ain't going anywhere. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George now have Ty Lu as their coach. So there's a new voice in, the, in Clipperland. Okay, we saw what Utah and Denver could do, etc. Cetera, et cetera. The West is going to be loaded. What Houston has is not enough. It's not enough it to win a championship. this year. How about next year? It's not going to be enough. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't enough this year. It's not going to be enough next year. And Tillman Fertitta does not need to be saying, we ain't changing. Yes, you are. Because the man wants to win. You would need to change. There are two levels to this. Number one, we agree about that part. I don't have to rehash it. Hire a GM first and then let him figure it out, yeah, right? Now, now, here are the two levels. If you are Kobe Bryant. Okay. Or you are Derek Jeter. Forget football. It's a different sport. You know, Joe Montana, Tom Brady at the end, they were on new teams. Let, let's take other if – you're, if you're Kobe Bryant or Derek Jeter and you have five chips with that organization, guess what? Derek Jeter in his last season plays shortstop and it cost the Yankees a trip to the postseason because his defense wasn't good enough anymore and he didn't hit much. Kobe Bryant got that last contract, $25 million a year, and he wasn't good enough anymore and the Lakers were terrible. But fans of that team could say, uh-uh. Derek Jeter, that dude's never putting on another uniform. Kobe Bryant, there'd be, there'd be like a riot. There, you know, there, there, there'd be a mutiny. There'd be, you cannot let Kobe Bryant or Derek Jeter put on a five-time champions for those towns and those franchises. They can't leave. That's not James Harden or Russell Westbrook in Houston. I'm sorry. They didn't come up with those teams. They haven't won any championships with, those, with that team. Now, here's where it gets tricky. Here's the second level. If you wait until the guy isn't that valuable anymore, the Knicks did this with Patrick Ewing, and then you trade him, you know what you wind up with? Cat problems. You trade him for guys who aren't that good, and, and the Knicks were buried with cat problems trading Patrick Ewing because they waited till he didn't have value. And they, if you planned on moving on, you should have traded him when he still had some value. Shaquille O'Neal, here's the other part. Shaquille O'Neal still had value when the Lakers traded him. They didn't get back equal value, and the Lakers weren't good enough anymore until they made, several years later, a trade for Pau Gasol. So the issue is it's hard to replace a guy like James Harden. Usually in the NBA, the history of the league is whoever gets the best player in the deal wins the deal. Go find a better player than James Harden if you want to trade him. You can't just who trade him for that, parts. Who is that, though? Who are they, they going to get? What do they do? I understand that they can't win with this nucleus, but it's not like superstars of their level are just growing on trees. That's why if they wind up keeping Harden and trading Westbrook, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, or first of all, that's the only thing. You don't trade James Harden. Well, unless... You don't trade James Harden. Unless... Hodden. There is no unless. Well, here's the unless. You don't move James Harden. Well, let's say Giannis is available. Okay. You, know, you trading James Harden? No. Really? No. Because I am. No, let me tell you something oh, right now. No, 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 why? So, so Milwaukee could come to Houston? I mean, the, the bottom line is, this, 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 if you're talking about finding a way to pair Giannis with James Harden, you don't let go. In today's NBA, back in the day, that would be different. In today's NBA... When you have a magician on the offensive end like James Harden, James Harden has one problem offensively and one problem only. He needs too many damn, or he seems to need too many damn dribbles to do what he does. 
Outside how many of that, chips he want? there is nothing. I understand that, but how many chips is a lot of guys? How, want, how many? You can't how go many by that. How many teammates has Giannis Matt, ever had? Like Harden's had teammates. Look, excuse me. Well, 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 think about this first. When you talk about Harden, when he was in Oklahoma City, he was very young. He was a baby. Sure. Then he goes to Houston. What are you talking about, Dwight Howard? How'd you feel about that? Chris Paul the, and the, Russell listen, Westbrook. I, well, you the one that said if Chris Paul didn't get injured, they would have won the chip. That was you. You said it happened that. Happened to be me. <laughs> Why are you That's what you said. Okay. So you said that. Yep. So the point is, is that again, well, there's a lot they of questions. Chris Paul, they might win the chip in Milwaukee. Listen, all I'm telling you is this: I'm not trading James Harden. I'm holding on to him for dear life because the brother is too this. special. Let me say this. He's it, too special. Let me say this. We agree about this. It would be very when you the best player in the deal. That's mm -hmm. the team that wins the deal. Whoever gets the best player in NBA history, right? That's usually what happens. Very hard to find equal value for James Harden in a deal. I would never say never, period. I would sit there and say you got to get the right coach, and it has to be a coach that could get Russell Westbrook's personality to modify yeah. just a touch, or you got to be willing to move him to get some some other parts to pair with James Harden. But you are not moving Harden, that's I'm not for sure. Not even but, for but the Harden MVP, doesn't stay put because he's an icon. Not he stays put because of his value. There's a difference. Harden, Harden yeah. is an icon to me. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.